With no further delay, I'm going to talk about the role of extraoperative cortical stimulation in uh, glioma surgery for serving the mapping purposes, the cortical mapping purposes. These are my disclosures. These are my financial uh, relationships, which I don't think that will affect in any way my presentation uh, today. I practice in uh, Larissa, Greece. Larissa is an academic town of approximately 250,000 people, which is located in the uh, heart of the Greek mainland, approximately 250 kilometers north of Athens. And uh, is famous because this is the city, the town that uh, Hippocrates spent the last days of his life. And actually, he uh, practiced for almost a decade here in uh, the area of uh, ancient Larissa. So discussion about uh, glioma and its prognosis and uh, glioma surgery, we know that there are several factors that affect not only the survival, but also the quality of life and the overall prognosis of these patients. And unfortunately, you can see many of them, but the only one that we can really intervene and change is that of the extent of resection. So it's of great importance, as you may see in the well-known STUPS protocol that we follow for uh, GBMs, that we need to accomplish in that initial resection the uh, maximal possible resection of the underlying lesion. And why this is important? Because we know that the extent of the resection plays a significant role in the survival of these patients in high-grade lesions, as you may see, but also in low-grade lesions. And I think that it's even more important knowing that it's not only the survival itself, but it's also the quality of life of these patients as the patients themselves see and evaluate that. You can see that a publication that uh, examined exactly the patient's perspective, and they thought that the quality of life was better, and uh, this was demonstrated with higher uh, resections. And this is also uh, true that the maximal initial resection of gliomas and high and low grade uh, lesions affects mainly the complication, the procedural associated uh, complication rate. This is the study from MD Anderson, which was published a couple of years ago. And you can see that the complication rate was significantly lower in the group of patients that underwent a perilesional, a complete resection beyond the margins of the uh, tumor or the uh, 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 the lesion as this appeared on the imaging, on the preoperative imaging studies. So with that in mind, we know that there are available several different methodologies, imaging methodologies and electrophysiological methodologies that they are trying to just have, provide to the clinician an accurate preoperative mapping of the cortical and the subcortical structures. But we also know that the most accurate methodology still is the direct electrical cortical stimulation. And this can be employed either intraoperatively with the patient awake or extraoperatively. And the difference is that in one occasion, the stimulation occurs in the OR, while with the extraoperative stimulation, this occurs in the patient's room with the patient wide awake. What are the requirements for having uh, a patient going through an away craniotomy? The patient needs to be an adult, needs to be cooperative. You also need to have a cooperative anesthesiologist, which sounds to most of us like the definition of oxymoron to have a cooperative anesthesiologist. And also it requires pretty significant operative time for employing all these uh, tests that you need to employ during a wake procedure. Besides, there are certain limitations that are mostly related to the patient uh, himself or herself, such as obesity or the presence of any respiratory difficulties, midline uh, brain structure shift in the brain and significant uh, swelling, and also patients that are multilingual and uh, they require significant operative time for checking all these linguistic skills uh, in the OR. So, for all these reasons, we know that there is a certain percentage of failure of this uh, away craniotomy procedures, which has been demonstrated in the literature to be anywhere from 0.5 to uh, almost 6%. And there are several different reasons for that, as you may see. What do we do in these patients or in patients that they develop pretty significant brain edema or the patients that are, are, are really fearful of undergoing an awake procedure? 
there is an alternative. And that alternative is the extra operative stimulation through the implanted electrode, subdural strip uh, electrodes or subdural uh, grid electrodes. This is not a new technique. This is a technique that lends itself to the glioma surgery from the epilepsy surgery. We use all these uh, modalities to monitor patients and uh, follow them uh, for preoperative evaluation and monitor their seizure activity. And that's exactly what we need to do in these cases that we cannot perform an away craniotomy. We implant electrodes. You can have all the preoperative imaging studies, including regular conventional MRI, functional MRI, MR spectroscopy, if this is uh, available, DTIs and EEG data even. And you can fuse all these images on the uh, workstation and you can plan which areas you want to cover, which areas, in other words, you want to avoid or you want to map for avoiding them. And you can just implant that through uh, a regular craniotomy. This extra operative stimulation, I need to emphasize that is a two-stage procedure. So the first stage requires an open craniotomy, wide craniotomy for implanting all these electrodes. And you can uh, use any combination of grid, strip, or depth electrodes that you choose for covering the areas that you want to cover. Secure the electrodes and close the surgical wound in anatomical layers. And there are several uh, implantation uh, tips for time's uh, sake. I think that I'll skip that. And uh, you need to just verify the position of the implanted electrodes in certain contexts, in certain areas. We used to do that by obtaining post-operative uh, skull x-rays. I think this is of historical value nowadays, since we do have the opportunity to have 3D uh, models, MRI or CT scan based. And I think that you can uh, have an exact knowledge of where the implanted contacts are and which uh, their relationship is with the underlying pathology. So you perform the extraoperative stimulation with the patient at his or her convenience into his her room. And uh, having the patient wide awake, you can easily manage any seizure activity because that's how we do it most of the time. And you can employ unlimited language and other neuropsychological tests with no time limitations. What we use in uh, my institution, we stimulate these patients 48 hours after the uh, electrode implantation. And we employ a menu of four minimum, minimum language tasks that you may see on the screen, spontaneous speech, Boston naming test, text reading, and listening comprehension. Of course, you can increase that menu, you can enrich that menu with um, additional language tests if, you, if your patient is uh, cooperative or if you want to um, examine certain parameters in the linguistic skills and patterns of this patient. And whenever you see you have a positive finding, then you have to repeat that. We do that uh, three times for verifying that this was a positive test. Pretty regular stimulation parameters, as you may see, the uh, current amplitude is anywhere from two to four milliamps. And you can record during the stimulation process all the cognitive, psychological, or autonomic responses from this patient. And of course, there is no uh, complication proof procedure. So as any other surgical procedure, it has been associated with uh, different complications that you may see here with uh, various uh, percentages reported in the literature. And uh, um, this is our experience. I think this is the beef of uh, uh, the burger of my presentation today. During a 13 year period, we had 51 gliomas and the procedure was well tolerated by all the patients. We had uh, three cases that the patient was not able to complete the whole uh, stimulation process. And you can see that the average stimulation session was 1.4. That means that you can, do, you can go back and forth and you can re-stimulate if the first time there was some kind of failure. This is another advantage of the extra-op stimulation versus the uh, intra-op awake procedure. And uh, also another uh, parameter that you need to take um, into consideration is, is that of seizure, uh, which apparently is uh, associated with the stimulation process itself. And actually, we thought that this was quite high in our series, but if you just uh, check the literature, the pertinent literature, you can see that has been reported even higher seizure activity during extraoperative stimulation up to 33%.
Another gray zone used to be the uh, choice of monopolar versus bipolar stimulation. I think this has been solved since most of us use uh, nowadays bipolar stimulation, it's more accurate. What is coming down the pike? There are several different things, several different uh, shapes and um, uh, electrodes that are available, commercially available. We do have these uh, electrodes that you can see on the left side of your screen with micro wire arrays embedded in between the regular contacts. And that gives you the opportunity to have significantly more accurate uh, representation of cortical areas. You can be more accurate in your uh, stimulation and the recording of the certain um, stimuli. And also we do have specially designed uh, electrodes for special anatomical areas such that, that you see and is specially designed for covering the area of insula. And we can have high density electrodes exactly for having more accurate anatomic information. As I said, this is not a new methodology and there are uh, several numerous publications in the pertinent literature from adults and also from uh, pediatric series that uh, they employ the same kind of methodology. And uh, I would uh, wrap it up here and I would say that the ex-operative cortical stimulation modality represents a complementary methodology to the way craniotomy. It may be the uh, only mapping option for pediatric patients or for adult patient, patients that are not uh, quite comfortable with the concept of being awake in the OR. And it may be a valuable research tool since it provides significant information regarding extensive uh, language cortical networks and also gives the clinician the opportunity to record autonomic responses or other emotional responses that cannot be uh, really appreciated in the OR with the patient really stressed. So with that, I would like to thank you for your uh, attention and thank again my co-speakers in this session for allowing me to uh, present first in this session. Thank you so much.